Hey everyone, Horror Hottie here. Today I'll be discussing every film I've watched this month. I'd like to note that this will be containing spoilers, so if a film you plan on seeing comes up, simply use the timestamps provided to skip to the next film in the lineup. I will also be including all content warnings included in the film written on the screen, so I don't make a film sound great for you to go out and watch it only to find something upsetting included. To start off the month, I watched the entirety of the Rocky and Scream film franchises, as Creed 3 and Scream 6 released at the beginning of this month. I also ranked each of the Saw films. I dedicated entire videos to each of them, so be sure to check them out if you haven't already. Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties, One Star. I thought it was so funny that Garfield's implied John should be with a guy instead of a girl. Garfield says gay rights. Jennifer Love Hewitt, goddamn. I love the cow, my favorite animal, as you can tell. This had more funny lines. Prince canonically smokes weed, aka eats catnip. Most people would consider it a red flag if someone allowed followed you to another country unexpectedly with plans to propose. Not me though. If they aren't that obsessed with me, I don't want them. Garfield did not need to go British. What are the odds that in this world where every animal is just a normal animal except for Garfield, who is a cartoon, there is one other who fits his cartoony style. Garfield and Odie would not have made it past customs at the airport. Despite Prince being not realistic, it was still upsetting to see him being thrown over a waterfall in an attempt to drown him. It's unfortunately a very sad fate that happens to a lot of unwanted pets. I find myself something for a lot of Tim Curry's characters, but I draw the line with anthropomorphic orange cats. This contained gross out humor, unfortunately. They just executed this film very poorly. Fuse, Memoirs of a Huntress, 3 stars. I'm glad the murderer got a little taste of his own medicine. This film made me laugh a few times. I think the wolf is pretty too. I need beautiful women to fawn over me too. I love the gorgeous pastel color palette, art style, and animation. Wow, the true form being shown in the shadow, the dead stare, his true nature coming out, the cross-dressing, a both of just like me. I love Shino. He's my dream man for real. I 100% know if I was living in these times, I'd probably court a pretty theater man who only acts as a woman. I'd probably be killed if I courted a woman, so... It was smart of the protagonist to request installments of the reward money to prevent her brother blowing it all. I went to a trade school for a year while in high school to learn graphic design. I also learned how to screen print, so it was interesting to see how they did it back then. I love the newspaper girl, my doe, and her personality. I love how romantic this is for most of the film. The wolf animal was kind of goofy looking, and she just shot him in the neck to make dog soup for her dead grandparent who couldn't even eat it. Fuck you. This features a lot of yee yee ass haircuts. This film had my jaw gaped open. This film is highly upsetting if you're sensitive to animal harm like me. Gross out humor is included, unfortunately. I hate the word deflower, weird ass shit. This movie is pretty depressing. And no, not the CGI. An attempted sexual assault scene is included, but stops before anything actually happens, luckily. Now, I'm all for unhappy endings, however, in this case, I would have liked this film more if the lovers got to be together in the end. I'm sure they got to be reunited sometime after the film, however, I think they should have simply ran away together. Before you watch this, watch The Wolf Children, it's better. Then, if you really like that, watch this. This was so split down the middle. Half was good parts that were amazing, half was bad parts that were horrible. Pompo the Cinephile, three stars. Oh, to be a director, paying hot women to hang out with you all day, living the dream. Love a good tentacle film. Pompo's hairstyle is very cute. I love how they added in other art styles, especially considering the subject matter of the film. My favorite character is the blonde actress. I'd love to go shopping with her. Okay now, a lot of anime has a problem with making characters look ridiculously young. I looked it up and Pombo is stated to be a middle schooler. I know she's a nepotism baby, but she already has a handful of films, it doesn't add up. I will give them props for not sexualizing her like I expected based on watching other anime. I don't even have to check fan art to know, that's not what some people who have seen the film interpret her though. It's awfully pathetic that I have to commend this film for not sexualizing a middle school girl, however, this is Japan we're talking about. The thing is, I also thought the soon-to-be director and upcoming actress were literal children because that's what they look like. It didn't hit me that they were meant to be adults until I saw the girl working in construction and cleaning the outside of skyscrapers. And no, not the CGI. 
You can't be a content creator if you're happy? What? Weird ass logic. This contains inflation. The kink. Damn, this bitch really left her apartment door wide open leaving for her audition. If your smile is your best asset, wow, please improve yourself. <laughs> Why is this idiot telling this plain adolescent looking girl that she's attractive? She's not. It's also not even what the role calls for. She's playing a child in which her role is to highlight her relationship with her adoptive father figure. Sexy isn't the move here. Editing is not objective. Uh, the director is very excited to edit the film, stating it's fun. I edit YouTube videos and it's the least fun aspect of the whole process. The demanding of another scene by the director after the filming was complete pissed me off. This film was really searching to meet that 90 minute mark, filling itself with editing that meant nothing to the audience. I myself understand editing, but there was nothing to gain or understand by watching those useless clips. This could have easily been a short film. In fact, it should have been. Why is this wealthy Nepo baby begging the minimum wage mass for money? Eat the rich. Wow. When someone says the favorite thing they liked about a movie is that it's only 90 minutes, it's an insult. It means, it was so bad the only compliment I can give it is at least it didn't waste more of my time. To say that about your own film though? Come on. Monster Family. 1.5 stars. The Heart Shaped Coffin. Love a romantic vampire. Mm. Love a silver fox too. My father wasn't present in my life. <laughs> the student with a blue bob and v-bangs slayed. I wish just dialing a wrong number and talking for one minute was all it took for someone to become obsessed with me. The transformations slayed for the most part. I'd give anything for that disco slash heavy band. When he pushes you off an airplane just to catch you, I'm dead. <laughs> this has so many sweet moments. Now, I'm not saying she should have cheated and abandoned her family. What I am saying is she should have totally broke up with her husband and moved on with Dracula afterwards. Why does this classroom have such a wide variety of grades at the same time teaching the same subject? <sighs> this movie is cringy and awkward. Ugh, gross out humor. Only the lowest of the low in terms of sense of humor find this funny. Even as a child, I did not find this funny. This movie is nonsensical. My least favorite character was the dad. He has no redeemable qualities. One of the most, that being that he has a job. Uh, I hate when people fawn over you and as soon as they reject you they do a total 180 with the whole whatever I never want to do anyways. Actually you aren't attractive. So immature. There is an earwax eating scene included. No one could love you, it said to Jacula. Well, I can prove that one wrong. Overall, just watch Hotel Transylvania instead. Night is short, walk on girl. 3.5 stars. I can see why the most popular guy is the most popular. Love pretty boys who cross dress. I love how he tricked underwear guy. I love the voice acting here. I enjoy all the alcohol talk here. While I myself never have and never would drink alcohol, I find it very interesting. All the different combinations and such. Tricks can also be performed while serving it. It's interesting to see people's collections too. I also have a print of Dream of the Fisherman's Wife. It's huge and it's in my bathroom. This has a super in interesting perspective shot. I love the book god character. Fight against inflation and scalping, fuck yeah. I love the koi jacket slash backpack. I enjoyed the play. My favorite setting was the convenience store. I love the food shots, and I appreciate the romantic effort shown. I really dislike extremely simplistic character design. The color palette is lacking too. This film looks incredibly cheap and seems way older than it actually is. Ew, wearing the same underwear every day? I know he stinks. I wish to not see sexual assault. It's one thing for the character to attempt it, but be stopped before they can carry it out, but too far in my opinion to have it actually shown. Both ways get the point across, however, one actively upsets your audience. It's not worth it. I didn't like that she apologized for hitting him after he did it. Why is this bitch begging for a guy's attention that doesn't change his underwear? Saying she'd do anything for him and even get plastic surgery? The fine-ass dude, my favorite character, is even willing to become a girl for him. Bro. Don't let anime fans see this. They'll think all hot babes and traps want is for you to be dirty. Trust me, anime fans do not need any more encouragement to be even more dirty. Angel's Egg. Three stars. I love the character design here. This is a religious film, so do with that information what you will. I love the people involved in creating this work and the work that has eventually been inspired by this. This has some really cute moments. You have to break an egg in order to know what's inside. 
What? A lot of eggs hatched, dumbass. I felt as though this film could have been way more effective if it fully utilized sound effects. Even though this was short, it needed to be shorter. Who I recommend this film for? Christians, those interested in learning about religion, people who like deep symbolic films. Who I don't recommend this film for? People with short attention spans. You will be bored very quickly. Don't put this on to watch in the background. It has very few words and is a visual experience. I wouldn't recommend this to just anyone. In fact, I think the best way to go about it is to stumble across it yourself instead of through a recommendation. To put it bluntly, I think the only people who would enjoy this are the pretentious and deeply religious. I have a religious upbringing, unfortunately, so I was able to catch a lot of the references to the Bible. However, there are more obvious tells such as the male character carrying a cross. However, because I was burned by religion, I don't see it the same way a lot of people do. I mostly view it as the horrible people who partake in it and what they do. The Collector, one star. Do not watch this film as it has extreme and graphic violence against animals shown. This film was made for psychopaths who hate animals. The Red Box is a great idea and very scary. I love your mermaid fit, cool kid. Whoa, that underwater wall painting, so cool. I also love the adorable fish. This had surprisingly good acting. I can see they took a lot of inspiration from Saw and Home Alone. Wow, those glowing eyes. I really like the antagonist's outfit. Yikes. They chose a basic ass font for the opening credits. This feels very uh, underproduced right off the bat. The color grading, considering this is from 2009, the audio levels also lead me to this thought. This feels very amateur. There were a lot of insects in the opening. I have an intense phobia and it was very scary. I covered the screen in the opening. So scary, that spider on the teacup looked so bad and so fake. Bro, this movie needs to chill out with all the bugs. Wasps are some of the scariest because they're so dangerous. They don't even make honey, so they're useless as fuck. I googled it and apparently they murder other bugs, but those bugs aren't as bad as wasps, so really, no purpose. All those bear traps were excessive. The cats, why, fuck you. God damn, this film can't have a single animal in it without them dying. Even the fish were murdered. And why did he do that to the dog? Bro, enough. That's more than enough. If I had to kill a dog to save my own life, especially in such a brutal way, I wouldn't do it. Dogs are inherently innocent creatures, unlike humans. I saw an edit of the villain in this and went damn. Then I looked up more edits of this character and went double damn. I was so excited to watch this, I didn't bother looking up content warnings, which I usually remember to do. Don't be like me, folks. The thirst was too strong. The Collection, four stars. This film offered some new interesting dynamics. When he dragged his knife against the wall, oof. Interesting taxidermy. This ended up being way better than the original, with only one scene including animal abuse. I would have preferred Zero, but it's a huge improvement from the last film. I loved the ending here. Damn, they're really keeping on the insect theme, huh? Fuck cheating. A character literally says owie while getting tortured. Poor dogs. The Hunt. Two stars. Dicks are out, folks. Wish it was Mads instead. I would die for Fanny the dog. Dogs with floppy ears are some of the cutest. I'm glad Lucas handled the kiss well and taught her it's only okay to kiss her mom and her dad on the lips. Good redirection. A predator would have easily taken advantage of the situation. It's okay to be a kindergarten teacher at an old age if that's what you're passionate about. It was nice seeing Mads perform in his native language. I did not want to see that kid taking a shit. Fuck that kid for not wiping his own ass while being perfectly capable. Don't threaten to hurt the dog. Not shame on Fanny, shame on you. It's in a dog's nature to bark, especially hunting dogs such as Fanny. And showing that little ass kid porn? Bro, I just wanted to see a film starring the total babe that is Mass Mickelson, not seeing a kindergartner getting sexually harassed. Extremely upsetting. If I had a daughter and she said someone had shown her their penis, I would not be serving them lemonade. The only thing I'd be feeding them is these hands. The father doubting his own kindergarten daughter is extremely sad. It's important to believe people who come out about their sexual assault, especially children. Fuck anyone who took Lucas's side initially, even though he ended up innocent. Even if I were to get in a, a sexual assault allegation, believe the victim. You aren't being my friend by siding with me, you're being extremely disrespectful against victims of sexual assault. 
Unless the alleger retracts their statements or are proven to be lying, always believe them. There are many more people who never come out about their sexual assaults than people who report false allegations. People need to learn to stop being so critical against victims when it comes to sexual violence. They're saying you're, you've been nasty to me. Only because that's what you said. I wish Clara would have accused the person actually being sexually inappropriate with her, that being her older brother and his friends. Killing someone's dog because they sexually assaulted a child is the most brain-dead thing you can do. You're misdirecting your anger. If you're gonna kill anyone, kill the molester. It's not like his dog told him to do it or could have stopped it in any way. The only good thing with pedophiles is that the trash gets taken care of when convicted. Other inmates aren't especially kind to convicted pedophiles, and I'm happy about that. More often than not, if it comes to their attention, they'll make their prisoners' life unbearable or murder them. Okay, next up I watched Diary of a Mad Black Woman, and I have decided for the next month that I'm going to review all the Medea movies, so I'm going to skip this entry, but be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell in case you want to see my entire video dedicated just to that coming out. Circle, 1.5 stars. This reminded me of those Jubilee videos, you know, do women deserve rights? Women versus men debate. And strangers decide who wins the grand. This is exactly like that. Okay, it was low-key funny as fuck when the woman sacrificed herself and said, okay, I go in peace, goodbye everyone, and everyone quietly whispered, goodbye. <laughs> I was happy with who ended up living, he was clever. It was funny how it actually ended up being aliens in the end. Just for funsies, here's the order I would have voted for, in relevance to what we've seen on the screen. 1. Pigs. Fuck the police until I die. 2. The minister. 3. Men. Kill all men. 4. Me. I don't want to live anyways. 5. Elders. And 6. Pregnant people. It felt like characters were just showing up randomly, being there and not being there, only when it was relevant. At one point, they were trying to find the next oldest person, but there were clearly an older person in the background. Every time the pig opened its mouth, I was pissed off. They should have killed him sooner. A pregnant woman does not count as two people, you idiot. If I become pregnant, I don't suddenly become two people. I become someone with a sudden urge to visit my local pharmacy. I think if- I was happy the male kept making comments on the woman's body got eliminated. I'm not homophobic or anything, immediately after spouting some of the most homophobic shit I've heard. This was so nonsensical at times. It was so corny. How he had to choose to kill the unborn fetus at the end. It's not alive, so it shouldn't have counted. I was gonna give this a 2.5 star rating until they pulled that pro-life shit at the end. Berlin Syndrome. 4 stars. Oh, to have a romance in a foreign country while on vacation. The way I would genuinely be so ecstatic if this situation happened to me, a lot of my fantasies involve never having to work again. I actually do like that pink lingerie piece. That cute little dog really came out of nowhere, but I'm not complaining. Sadly, she also left just as quickly. Never tell a man you don't know that well that you're alone under any circumstances, even if you are. I didn't like how this is his hobby and he does this to multiple people. I didn't like the specific violence he did to his captive. Why is this dumbass cutting her hair while wet? It's not gonna be even. I thought it was lame that he wasn't even spending New Year's with the person he's forcing to be with him for a New Year's kiss. I love the revenge he got in the end. 7. 3.5 stars. This has an impressive cast. I like when the star-studded cast is full of people who are actually talented actors, not whoever was popular at the moment, which I have unfortunately been seeing pop up in a lot of films lately. I love that adorable pack of dogs. I always love a Seven Deadly Sins plotline. This is definitely done in a unique way. This is where the iconic what's in the fucking box line comes from. It's just a coincidence this ended up being a 7 out of 10 film. I don't care how much I love someone, I'm not removing their eye crust. Sexual violence is included. And the poor dog. Ghost Ship. 3 stars. Gorgeous Singer. Okay, I know it was wrong of that character to say, nice titties, but it's literally exactly what I was thinking, so I can't blame him too much. This had some scary moments. One standout scene had particularly good special effects. The singer ghost is who I aspire to be in the afterlife. The underwater gear death looked extremely painful. While that death scene in the beginning was interesting, I highly suspect it, its possibility. In fact, I... I'm almost certain it's impossible. I feel as though unless you're passionate and knowledgeable about boating, this isn't going to be the film for you. 
How were those rats even alive after all this time? I don't think a solid gold bar is that lightweight. Ugh, not cheating. Oh, I don't even want to say the word, but an extremely scary type of bug is shown. A lot of them. It's not disgusting for a man to do what a woman tells him. In fact, it's what they should do. Basically, while I don't think this is the film for me or most people, I thought it was still good. Alice Sweet Alice, one star. Do not watch this film, as real animal abuse against a kitten is shown on screen. A prop was not used, a real living kitten was used with no regard for its life. The thing that really drew me towards this film was the poster. In fact, I put off watching this for a few days because it looks really scary. Twins and the horror genre go together like bread and butter. The mother's hairstyle is so slay. Cute fishy, the kittens are so cute. I thought this was poorly shot. The sexual assault scene left me utterly disgusted. One, she is very young, visibly so. There's zero chance of mistaking her for an adult. Two, it's forced, which is horrendous regardless of age. And three, in order to get away, she killed a kitten. Absolutely uncalled for. I know how bad it is to be assaulted, but I would never do that to an animal, even if it saved me. Animals are innocent and have nothing to do with the people their owners are. I would rather kill myself than kill a kitten. The scene was horrific and drastically lowered the score of this film. It shouldn't have been included to begin with. What's worse is that it was a real cat shown throughout the entire scene. I don't even think that level of realism can be achieved even with today's technology, let alone in the 70s when this film was made. The fact that a real kitten had to be abused for this mediocre-ass film. Luckily, we don't see a body or any aftermath other than the owner exclaiming the kitten is dead, so there is a chance the real kitten was only abused and not murdered as well. Bugs are shown. These polygraph tests are such bullshit. The sick detectives talking about a 12-year-old in a sexual manner? <sighs> this film really did end up horrifying, but not in the way I expected. Cheating? Really? This film is going for everything unpleasant possible. I thought they revealed the killer too soon in the film, as I stopped paying attention for the most part after that. While the remaining twin may not have been the murderer, she ne still needs some serious help. The best film I saw this month with, was Creed 3 and the worst film, Alice Sweet Alice. In terms of shows, my fiancé suggested we started watching an anime called Charlotte. The first half was bad, but when you get to the twist, it becomes a million times better. I love sweet anime that ends up dark. I was also pleasantly surprised the little sister character wasn't sexualized. You would think it's astonishing for me to say this considering she's a middle schooler, however this is anime we're talking about. Sadly, it's very common for producers to push their sick fantasies into their work. Because the second half carries the series so hard, I'm giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, but it technically doesn't deserve it. What would you think of the ratings and reviews I gave the movies that you've seen? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. My goal is to watch 365 movies a year, one a day. If you want to read my full reviews, check out my letterbox list linked. I'm also interested in your ranking, so be sure to list them, or even just your favorite and why you like it. Please leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell for more monthly letterbox recaps as well as other content. If you'd like to support my content financially, please consider becoming a patron. I have tiers starting as low as $2 a month. I even have Patreon exclusive content up already. Check out the link in the description for more info on exclusive perks. Until next time, mwah.